name is Asha Rohde and I am the chairman and Zaza is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Mr David Morton. The topic of this debate is that Turnbull should stay in Parliament until the next election. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Newark to High School. The negative team seated to my left is from Pembroke. The speaking time for this debate is six minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time. And a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I now declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Alyssa Feltis. Good evening, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that Turnbull should have stayed in Parliament until the next election. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe in this statement. We define tonight's topic to mean that Malcolm Turnbull, the 29th Australian Prime Minister, first elected to the seat of Wentworth in 2004, of whom was relinquished of his role as Prime Minister by votes of popularity within his party, the Liberal Party, should have remained in his position within Parliament, representing the Wentworth electorate until the conduction of the next federal election, which will occur no later than May 2019. We believe that this the best time for Turnbull to leave Parliament would be when the next election is called to ensure the least disruption to the Australian Government. Tonight, as the first affirmative speaker, I will be discussing the promises made by the Liberal Party in the lead up to the 2016 federal election, as well as the distrust in the Australian Government as a result of yet another leadership spill and by election. Our second speaker, Lucy, will argue that by elections are costly and impractical due to the pending election next year, as well as the potential for a hung parliament. Our third and final speaker, Ashley, will rebut the negative team and sum up our team's case. My first argument tonight is regarding election promises. An election promise is a promise or guarantee made to the public by a candidate or political party that is trying to win an election. Since 2004, Malcolm Turnbull has held the seat of Wentworth in the Australian Parliament. This seat has been held by a Liberal Party member since 1956, which some would argue is a relatively safe seat. However, since the leadership spill in August, where Turnbull was voted out of the Prime Minister position by his own party, a poll conducted by Reachtail in the Wentworth electorate found that the Liberal Party's popularity had dropped from 62% to 39%. Whilst Turnbull may not have the position of power he did before, by remaining in the Australian Parliament until at least the next election would ensure he can uphold his election promises to Wentworth. Turnbull has ele was elected to this seat to tackle climate change, and now the voters within this electorate are pledging to do what he couldn't do by looking to place their votes with a different party. Turnbull promised to actively advocate for climate change and a more sustainable future, yet by leaving this seat and causing a by-election means that he is not upholding his election promises to the people who had trusted him for 14 years. In the same poll, 66% of the people of Wentworth believe that the Liberal government under Scott Morrison would do less to tackle climate change, something that the people of this electorate are very passionate about. Australian Institute Executive Director Ben Oakless has reported that in regards to the Liberals winning the now vacant Wentworth seat in the upcoming by-election, the task is made all the more difficult because this poll shows that the government is out of touch with the people of Wentworth and that Malcolm Turnbull had a huge personal vote and is enormously popular in the electorate. This proves that the Liberal Party winning the Wentworth seat may be, in the upcoming by-election may prove more difficult than first anticipated. ABC election analyst Anthony Green has also predicted a swing against the Liberal Party at the next by-election, saying Turnbull's vote is significantly higher than the Liberal vote in the Senate, which suggests the swing against the government at the next by-election will be maybe 4-5%, to 5 just based on the fact that Malcolm Turnbull is no longer a candidate. If the Liberal Party candidate does not win the seat in the upcoming by-election, both major parties will have the same population of seats within the government, resulting in what is called a hung parliament. Our second speaker, Lucy, will discuss the further consequences of this. My final argument tonight is the distrust in our Australian government. The recent leadership spill has left not only the Australian public, but those all around the globe questioning the stability of our parliament. Some reporters around Australia, including those who write for The Australian, 
have to describe our government as equivalent to that of a third world country. And Labor leader Bill Shorten has stated, Australia no longer has a functioning government. Whilst Australia has not had a Prime Minister serve full term for more than a decade, the Times of London have commented on the spill in August as the gravest political crisis in decades. The announcement of Australian intensive care units no longer questioning patients upon who the Australian Prime Minister is as a test of short-term memory proves an indicator of the short cycle of governing leaders. The resignation of Malcolm Turnbull from his seat in Wentworth could see an increase in the instability of the Australian government due to the competition to place, replace the Wentworth seat. Furthermore, Morrison has promised to bring stability in the government during his reign, but due to the pending federal election to be held in May 2019, there is a chance he may not be Prime Minister for long. Foreign policy experts have expressed their concerns about the negative impact upon Australia's reputation, as the external message about good governance could be undermined after the events that have unfolded in previous years, as well as the current political situation. According to the Edelman Trust Barometer, Australia's trust in the government is only 35%. Steve Spur, CEO of Edelman Australia, has said decreasing trust in government is the result of the another unsettled year for Australian politics and that a majority of Australians believe their government is broken. Turnbull said in an outgoing speech that Australians would be dumbstruck and so appalled at the events which saw him lose his role as Prime Minister and that many Australians would be shaking their heads in disbelief at what's been done. Whilst this coincides with the Edelman Barometer's results, reflecting what an average Australian believes, Turnbull should continue to serve in his seat in the electorate until the conduction of the next federal election. So, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair, we the affirmative team wish to reinforce that Turnbull should have remained in the Wentworth seat until the next election due to the uncertainty of the future of the Wentworth seat. Further to this, the distrust in our government has been increasing and the least Turnbull could do is to maintain his position until the next federal election. Thank you. Have a fresh air switch. Like at our school, there's a fresh air switch that makes it make this noise.
The opposition's first speaker spoke first to you about how if Turnbull resigns now, he cannot uphold election promises that he made when he first was elected. Ladies and gentlemen, if Malcolm Turnbull was to stay in Parliament, theoretically, until the next federal election, he would be sitting on the bench, essentially. He would be literally just waiting for the chance for him to resign. He would not be doing much in terms of advocating, especially not for climate change, which he has failed to advocate largely for during his um, prime ministerial shift. Um, in addition, the opposition spoke briefly about the possibility of a hung parliament should Turnbull resign now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the chances of Turnbull's seat being taken by a non-liberal are hugely slim, slim. So furthermore, the chances of there actually being a hung parliament are hugely slim. Um, they also discussed the distrust in the government that has come about as a result of the recent leadership spill. As I will elaborate on later in my speech, having former PMs in the parliament can contribute to political instability which would only serve to hugely deepen this distrust. Moving on. My name is Robin, and as first speaker tonight, I will be discussing with you the broad political side of this debate, most notably that regarding political stability. My second speaker, Ethan, will be discussing the more personal side of today's debate, outlining Malcolm Turnbull's rights as an individual. Our third speaker, Kate, will sum up our team case and rebut the opposition. To begin, ladies and gentlemen, let's just quickly talk about the circumstances that surrounded Malcolm Turnbull's loss of his position as Prime Minister. A political coup was orchestrated against Malcolm Turnbull, resulting in a leadership spill which therefore resulted as his outs with his ousting as Prime Minister and his replacement by Scott Morrison. However, ladies and gentlemen, the reality of the situation is not black and white. Many, including reputable newspaper The West Australian, speculate that Tony Abbott, Turnbull's predecessor as PM, quote, played a key role in the insurgency that brought down Mr Turnbull, end quote. While the extent of it is unknown, Tony Abbott's involvement in the coup is undeniable. Even Liberal Party Treasurer Michael Yapsley has stated that, quote, he, Tony Abbott, has destabilised. He has really done everything he could to make things as difficult as possible for Malcolm Turnbull, end quote. This is the perfect supporting example for my first point. In the pursuit of political stability in Parliament, and indeed within the Liberal Party, the presence of former PMs in the lower house can foment unrest and provide a rallying point for those unhappy with the new leadership. In fact, a negative precedent has been set by a number of individuals in the past. Kevin Rudd was replaced by Julia Gillard, a member of his own party, who was then ousted by Kevin Rudd, who chose to remain in Parliament. Rudd was then succeeded by Tony Abbott, who was then replaced by Malcolm Turnbull, who has now been ousted in a coup Tony Abbott clearly has had some level of involvement in. As Liberal Senator Conchetta Fiera Vanti Wells puts it, quote, for Tony Abbott, this is unfinished business and he's got his agenda, end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, we the negative team do not seem to suggest that the choice to remain in Parliament should be taken away from former Prime Ministers. In fact, we believe that uh, it should be a matter entirely based on personal choice, as my second speaker will elaborate on. However, I am certain it can be agreed that achieving some modicum of stability would be in the country's best interests. Australia has, quite ridiculously, gone through six Prime Ministers in the past five years. Having an individual who was once at the very top of the chain of command return to the lower house as simply a representative is bound to rock the boat. Not only is there a huge hierarchical shift that can make cooperation within the party a challenge, there is always going to be bad blood between the politicians that were involved in each other's removal from the top job, as is evident between Tony Abbott's and Malcolm Turnbull's relations to this day. We want our politicians' motivations to be that of governing our country and governing our country well, and the presence of former Prime Ministers in Parliament could, and has in the past, facilitate self-interest-driven actions by politicians who see opportunity for revenge or self-gain. As Senator Barnaby Joyce states, quote, it's called ambition, it's called ego, and that's how it works, end quote. Moving on to my second point, the potential political benefits that could arise from having a new representative for the Wentworth seat elected now after a by-election as opposed to during the next federal election. A by-election now would allow the, the Wentworth electorate literally a trial run, so to speak, of their newly elected member. It would give them the opportunity to vote based on the candidate's representation of their local interests, rather than with federal polit politics at the forefront of their mind. In other words, it would allow the election of a representative based entirely on the personal merit of the representative. The voter's choice is driven less by the presence of the political struggle between parties that accompanies a federal election, and more by their personal views of the candidates. A by-election additionally allows a period in which the candidate's ability to serve the interests of Wentworth can be observed. The federal election is just around the corner, so whoever they elect will literally be on a probation period, allowing the Wentworth electorate to re-elect the same member or elect a new member based on their practical performance and representation of the Wentworth electorate in Parliament. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, 
It is clear that Malcolm Turnbull should not remain in Parliament until the next federal election. This is in both the best interests of the lower house, allowing for the political stability that Australia desperately lacks, as well as the Wentworth electorate who will benefit from a by-election before the federal election. I close with this, a quote from Malcolm Turnbull's recent speech regarding his leaving Parliament. A former Prime Minister is best out of it than in it, and recent events have definitely undermined the value of that observation. Thank you. promises made by Turnbull to his electorate in 2015, as well as the distrust Australians already have in our government that would only further be enhanced by Turnbull leaving. Tonight I will discuss with you why a by-election would be costly and impractical, and waiting until the next federal election for Turnbull to resign would be a more suitable option for Australia to avoid the possibility of a hung parliament. Before I continue, I'd like to point out a few flaws in the opposition's case. The first negative speaker used a quote from Malcolm Turnbull in reference to Abbott biting back from the backbenchers. No, I make it very clear that I believe former Prime Ministers are best out of the Parliament and I don't think there's much evidence to suggest that that conclusion is incorrect to support their team's case. Whilst Turnbull may come across as hypocritical to remain in Parliament, we make no suggestion that it is in his own interest to remain there. It is in the interest of the electorate, the Australian Government and the Liberal Party. Australians have had enough of politicians putting their own PR above the needs of the country. So let Turnbull look a little hypocritical for six months if it saves the country another two million dollars. And if it means avoiding a hung parliament and all the expense, instability and uncertainty that comes with it, as I will explain further in my arguments. The first negative speaker tried to suggest that the chances of a hung parliament are small, but gave no evidence to support this. I'll go further into the details of a hung parliament further in my argument. 
Chi also said that if Turnbull were to stay in government, it would only be an opportunity for some sort of sabotage. This may be true for past Prime Ministers, but in the circumstances of this election, it would mean leaving early would be comparable to a form of sabotage for personal gain. My first argument tonight. As a result of Turnbull's resignation last Friday, a by-election will have to be held to find a member to fill the seat in Parliament for the Wentworth electorate, which will be costly and impractical given his term is almost over anyway. This by-election is predicted to be held on October the 6th, leaving less than six months before the prospective election. By-elections already cost Australia a substantial amount of government and taxpayers' money. In the case of death, expulsion, disqualification or ineligibility of a member, a by-election is a perfectly reasonable and necessary excuse to spend such money. However, early resignation is a different case. Although resignation is allowed in Australian government, it is generally an impractical way to spend government and party funds, especially right before an election. Since 2015, there have been several costly by-elections in Australia, including the 2017 New England by-election, which cost more than $1.6 million, and in 2015 for Canning, cost Australia over $2 million. Due to the recent citizenship crisis, Australia lost many members of Parliament, which required five unexpected by-elections, far more than accounted for normally. The government as a whole should be doing anything they can to prevent yet another by-election which would only cause further distrust in an already unstable government and exceed the budget for by-elections. In addition to the primary cost of the by-election, there is a large amount of money that has to be put towards each party's campaign in the build-up to an election. Currently, the Liberal Party is far too underfunded to prepare for this scenario, and their largest donor for the preceding election in 2016 was Turnbull himself, who controversially put $1.75 million of his own money towards the election. With Malcolm Turnbull's resignation, a huge amount of money would have to go towards a by-election and then the following election shortly after, which may be out of their budget. These costs are unnecessary and Malcolm Turnbull cannot expect everyone else to pay for his desire to leave Parliament early, when he can simply remain in Parliament until the next federal election to resign. Now on to my second argument for tonight. In the House of Representatives currently, the Coalition have 76 of the 150 seats available, allowing them to have the majority and therefore giving them government by just one seat. To conduct a by-election for the seat of Wentworth would put the single seat allowing them to have majority at risk. As Alyssa explained to you, if a non-Coalition member was to win the seat of Wentworth, which is highly likely given the current political climate, this would result in a hung parliament. A hung parliament is where neither major party has the majority, as the coalition would then be sitting on 75 seats instead of 76. The Parliament of, of Australia website says that the Australian Constitution does not specifically deal with the situation of a hung parliament, and according to constitutional experts, hung parliaments are resolved by a set of unwritten rules or conventions inherited from the UK. It would be in the best interest of Australia and the government to avoid this situation to the best of their ability, which means avoiding another by-election. In extreme cases, a hung parliament could result in the Governor-General being forced to call another federal election, which again would be a huge expense and unwise directly before an organised election. In between the time of a hung parliament and the Governor-General being able to call another election, the Australian government would be in disarray, especially without any written guidelines. The last time a hung parliament occurred was 78 years ago, where Australian government was very different to what it is now. The current news polls and statistics also suggest that the chances of a Liberal vote has decreased with Malcolm Turnbull's resignation, and the chance of a new Labor member has increased. Malcolm Turnbull should have stayed in Parliament until the next election, as he has now set his party and all of Australia up for a problematic situation. In conclusion, whilst there will be time for Turnbull to leave Parliament, when a new election is called, now is not the time based on the cost of a by-election and the risk of it resulting in a hung parliament. Thank you.
I call upon the second negative speaker, Ethan Nichols. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the topic for this debate, as previously stated, is that Turnbull should remain in Parliament until the next election. And as previously argued by my first speaker, Robin, our, sh our team is sure that this is false. My points this evening are regarding the more personal side of this debate, how you should remain in and talking specifically about how Malcolm Turnbull, as an individual, and how you should not remain in Parliament if it is not his will to do so. Before I begin, though, I would like to point out several flaws in the arguments brought up by the opposition. The first of family speakers brought up promises made during the election, and to follow what my first speaker said, quite honestly, we believe that this point doesn't mean much, as the promises made by a party are not legally binding, and while it provides a loss of trust for Turnbull, it's all speculation to his motives. I have no doubt that Turnbull was, was interested in solving climate change, but there is no real source as to Turnbull's personal motives to resign, and could have easily had the motive to do what's best for the nation. The second affirmative speaker has said that Turnbull remaining in Parliament is of the best interest of the Australian, Australian government and political bases. But the affirmative team has failed to mention why this is the best interest for the man himself. Australia is a free country and resignation is allowed and if Turnbull feels the need to resign for any personal motive, no one should stop him because of it being slightly more easy. The second affirmative speaker has outlined the cost of by-election entails and they have and they have firstly failed to give evidence to support their claims that a by-election would exceed the allocated budget. Additionally, there, is, there are, as my first speaker outlined, there are several benefits to a by-election for the Wentworth electorate. Now to my case. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, believe that Malcolm Turnbull reserves every right to leave Parliament and resign from his position as a representative for Wentworth. Malcolm Turnbull is 63 years old. The average age for retirement in Australia, as per the Australian Mutual Provider, is 55.3 to 58.8 years. The average time for politicians to serve in Parliament is 10.6 years. Turnbull has served in Parliament since 2004 and thus has been serving for more than 13 years of his life, which is well over the average. Australian Parliament House records show that only 15% of representatives are over the age of 60, and of them, only 8% have served in Parliament for more than 12 years. Turnbull has, for lack of a better phrase, done his time. If he no longer wishes to serve the Australian Parliament or within the lower house, then who is anyone to take that right of resignation away from him? Turnbull des deserves the right to move away from Parliament. He has no obligation to sit on the back benches and work long hours that he could be spending with his family or in retirement for the sole purpose of serving until the next election. Additionally, who can dictate when Turnbull no longer feels suitable to carry out his responsibilities as Wentworth representative, other than the man in question? The job of the Wentworth representative is to represent the Wentworth electorate, and Turnbull knows better than anyone how suitably he can perform. After all, who do we, who sit on our couches at home listening to some news source about politics with a hand in a Pringles can, know in comparison to someone who's served in Parliament for 14 years? What do we, the uneducated public, truly know. All we know is what Malcolm Turnbull has told us. Everything outside of that is merely speculation. How can the media, or indeed the opposition, claim that Malcolm Turnbull should, or must, or has an obligation to maintain his seat in the lower house when we know nothing of Malcolm Turnbull's personal motivations or attitudes towards his job or life? He has every right to no longer feel capable for the job or to feel that as an ex-Prime Minister he should not return to Parliament and he should be able to retire and step down from his position. My final point this evening is that when all is said and done, Malcolm Turnbull should not stay in Parliament until the next election as he has no legal obligation to do so. We live in a free country and nobody can take away Turnbull's rights to resign from his occupation. Turnbull has two children, has worked his entire life and just like in any other occupation should be able to step down from a working position your family life and endure retirement when he sees fit. Turnbull has no legal obligation to remain in Parliament and for this fact he has the complete right to resign as a member of Parliament if that's what he believes is best for be it the country or himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Turnbull has already served an extended period in Parliament. Just like you or me, he has a family and a social life and he has the same rights as you or me to spend time with. 
He has no legal obligation to stay in service and should hold the same rights to resignation as any other member of the public. Disregard every other point made this evening referring to Labor vs Liberal, seat majorities and the next federal election. The real, undeniable reason why Turnbull should not stay in Parliament until the next election is because he clearly doesn't want to and nobody has the right to prevent him from resigning. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairman. Topic for tonight's debate is that Tandle should have stayed in Parliament until the next election. We, the affirmative team, take this statement to be true. 
first Nebuchadnezzar the speaker has said that Temple hasn't done much to deliver on his promises. However, 66% of 886 votes voters worry Morrison will do less to tackle climate change. There is nothing to say Turnbull won't do anything, as he has made a strong contribution to the cabinet, said by John Howard, former Australian peer. The first, famous, the first negative speaker also had no evidence to back up his claim. I would also like to reinforce what our second negative firm speaker, Lucy, said regarding to the first negative speaker. She said that if Turnbull were to stay in government, it would only be an opportunity for some sort of sabotage. This may be true for past prime ministers, but the circumstances of this election mean that leaving early would be comparable to sabotage for personal gain. The second negative speaker said it was Turnbull's right to leave Parliament. However, we would like to reiterate that although Turnbull has the right to leave as he desires, it is not in the best interest of Australia as a whole, and when signing up for this position, Campbell knew he would have to make personal sacrifices. The second negative speaker has quoted that Malcolm Turnbull's age depicts that, that generally people retire at the age he is now. However, Malcolm Turnbull will still be the same age if he were to leave Parliament in the next annually held election, making that comment irrelevant. He has also appeal to emotion in the quote of has family just like you and me. The second negative speaker also made the suggestion that a first speaker Alyssa connected Turnbull's re re resignation to his resolve to fight climate change. This is a straw man fallacy as we believe his focus on environmental issues is why he is popular in his, uh, why he is popular in his electorate, leaving him, leaving him in responsibility to his voters. Our first affirmative speaker, Alyssa, has discussed with you the promises made, made by Liberals in the 2016 federal election and the distrust in the Australian government. She continues mentioning the Wentworth seat in which Malcolm Turnbull has held since 2014, it being in the position of Liberals since 1956. Yet since the recent leadership spill, the seat's safety is within question. Our first affirmative speaker continues discussing if Turnbull were to remain in the Wentworth seat, he could uphold his election promise of tackling climate change, stating, a poll conducted by Realtel, Reachtel, claimed that 66% of people believe Scott Morrison, under the Liberal government, would do less to tackle climate change than Turnbull would. She continues mentioning the distrust within the Australian government, stating it has been compared to that of a third world country. With the Australian Intensive Care Unit no longer asking the question, who the current Prime Minister is to its patients. Our second affirmative speaker, Lucy, has discussed with you the cost and impracticality of another by-election and the potential for hard parliament. She continues discussing that the by-election will be held on October the 6th, less than six months from the prospective election, using more of Australians' taxpayers' money, stating it is an impractical way to spend the Funds. Our second affirmative speaker continues, mentioning there has been several high cost by elections within the last couple of years, stating government as a whole will be doing whatever they can to stop another by election. She continues to mention the House of Representatives with the coalition having 76 seats out of the 150, giving them the majority. However, holding this by-election will put this factor at risk. Continuing, if the non-coalition member was to win the seat, it would result in a hard parliament. This causing further financial issues if another election is needed to be called. The last one occurring 
78 years ago. Although some of the negative Queen's arguments are valid, there are more reasons for Malcolm Turnbull to stay in Parliament than to leave. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, we, the affirmative team, take, the, take tonight's statement that Malcolm Turnbull should have stayed in faith, stayed in Parliament until the next election to be true. As by the quote from Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States and the founding father, government exists for the interest of the government, not for the governor. Thank you. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, the topic for tonight's debate is that Malcolm Turnbull should have stayed in Parliament until the next federal election. The first two speakers for the negative team have already provided you with strong arguments as to why this is not the case, demonstrating that his remaining in Parliament would not be in the public interest or the interests of his party and certainly would not be in his own personal interest. As our final speaker, I will address the key arguments raised by the affirmative team and will then briefly summarise our team's case. First of all, the opposition stated in their definition and multiple times throughout their speeches that they believe Turnbull should resign at the time of the next federal election. Mr Turnbull resigned on Friday the 31st of August. The next federal election must be held before the 18th of May 2019, in all likelihood early March or mid-May. Assuming the election takes place on the 11th or the 18th of May, the two most likely dates, according to ABC election analyst Anthony Green, Mr Turnbull will have been out of Parliament for nearly nine months. It sounds like a cliché, but nine months is actually a very long time in federal politics. According to the Constitution, the term of each federal parliament is a maximum of three years from the date of first sittings, and in most cases, the parliament is actually dissolved earlier than this. Nine months is a quarter of a standard parliamentary term. So to me, and my team, the why bother holding an election argument doesn't really stand. As we've seen before, a lot of damage can be done by the presence of a deposed Prime Minister on the backbench for nine months. The affirmative team's case as a whole also seems to suggest that it's in the public interest for the Liberal Party to remain in power. Whilst we don't want to turn this into a debate on party politics, we think that's a strong case for an early federal election and most likely a change of government given the increasingly conservative stance of the coalition and unrest and division within its ranks. By forcing a by-election in Wentworth, Malcolm Turnbull may have provided the trigger for an early federal election 
and a likely change to the ALP government. Whatever your political views, there's some appeal to giving the population the right to decide on our Prime Minister, rather than leaving that in the hands of backroom party machinations. Perhaps in this way, Malcolm Turnbull really has acted in the interests of the people as a whole. Their first speaker also then stated, and their second, that Turnbull's resignation could lead to a hung parliament. Yes, the by-election in Wentworth will jeopardise the slim co coalition majority in the House of Representatives, which is currently only one seat. If it's lost to Labour, the Greens or an independent coalition would have to rely on cross-party MPs to pass legislation. However, given that the seat of Wentworth has been held by a Liberal MP since the party's foundation in 1944, and by Conservative predecessors before that, ever since Federation, it's still relatively unlikely that the seat will be lost. According to The Guardian, Wentworth is the eighth safest coalition seat in Australia, with a margin of 17.7%. It's true that without Malcolm Turnbull, the party will face a significant battle to retain the seat, with very early polling by Reachtel suggesting that this margin has been somewhat lost. However, we believe that the risk of losing the seat is well worth taking if it means that the party stands a better chance of presenting a united front for the next federal election. Their first speaker also stated that this leadership bill and Malcolm Turnbull's resignation will lead to a distrust in our parliament. Whilst our government may be unsteady on its feet, my first statement, speaker has already stated that we believe it is clear that were Turnbull to remain member of Wentworth, the government would only become more unsteady. A disgruntled backbench XPM is never good. After all, isn't Tony Abbott one of the factors which led up to this leadership spill? Malcolm Turnbull's resignation hardly impacts our trust in our government. No, that was all down to the rather Voldemort-esque Peter Dutton. Their second speaker went on to state that by-elections are not worth their cost. Whilst it's fair to say that by-elections, elections outside of a typical federal election period, are a costly affair, it's necessary to look at this in perspective. According to Business Insider Australia, the 2018-19 total federal budget is approximately $488.6 billion. When divided by 365, the approximate daily spend is $1,338,630,137. The cost of a by-election, in contrast, is between usually 1.5 and 1.6 million. To put this in perspective, that's approximately 0.12% of the daily spend and 0.0003% of our predicted annual spending. The cost of a by-election is a small price to pay. Their second speaker also went to state that by resigning, Malcolm Turnbull is ignoring his, his responsibilities to Wentworth constituents. It's thought likely that the next by-election will be around 6th of October. During this period where Malcolm Turnbull is not their member, his office will continue to receive constituents' concerns and to pass them on to relevant sections of the government. His former constituents will also have a chance to air any local concerns on the national stage in the context of the by-election. If anything, their views will be better represented Turning now to a brief summary of our team's case. Our first speaker, Robin, considered the political ramifications of Mr. Turnbull's resignation. She demonstrated that it's in the wider public interest and she contrasted to the situa situation following past leadership bills in the Rudd Gillard and Abbott Turnbull eras. She also noted that a by-election allows a focus on local issues for Wentworth constituents and she highlighted that the cost is a small price to pay for stability. Our second speaker, Ethan, considered the more personal aspects of his resignation. He's provided 14 years of service as an MP, and no one can take away his right to resign. To conclude, it's clear that Mr. Turnbull made the right decision to step down, nationally, locally, and personally. Thank you.